Welcome to TIDC Talks. We hope you're just wait for a few more participants to join, but we'll get started fairly shortly. Thank you for joining us. We're super excited. We're going to have uh, Jacqueline Manji, president of Ultralux Linens and longtime partner of TIDC's, most recently with the resource and which she'll share all of the info today with you. And she has a special guest joining her, Rohit Vijay from Deco and Deco Canada, which she'll introduce as well. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for the first in a series of Drapery 101 webinars. Um, today, we're uh, starting with um, how to specify drapery hardware. And uh, uh, we're starting with drapery hardware because we feel that it's uh, equally important uh, in the selection of, of um, your fabric when you're designing your drapery treatment. And we'll get into the specifics about that as we go through our webinar. Uh, we have a very special guest, as Daryl mentioned. Uh, Rohit from Deco and Deco is joining us today. And uh, Ro, uh, he's going to um, lend his expertise in um, his different uh, hardware collections that we sell at uh, Ultralux Linens. And um, it's uh, very quickly a fan favorite of designers across North America. And we're um, thrilled to show some of his uh, collection here today and um, hear uh, Rohit speak about uh, some of the different components that he has available. We have a lot of information to share, so let's get started. And by the way, we do welcome uh, questions as we're going through uh, the webinar. We'd love to hear from you. So today uh, we're going to uh, go through some key learnings. We're going to learn the different uh, components of uh, drapery hardware. We're gonna help you uh, plan uh, by creating a checklist for accuracy. And that's for when you're working with your installers or your drapery workrooms, and also with your clients on how to uh, make sure that you get all the different parts that are, are necessary for an install. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to partner with your drapery workroom and your installers and, ha and how to, on how to avoid um, costly mistakes, uh, errors, and issues that are gonna cost you on the job site. And then we're going to um, look at, or at least talk about a few of the emerging trends that are coming up. So we wanted to start, although this is not a um, drapery 101 course, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about some of the drapery terminology that you will encounter or that is connected and um, correlates to your drapery hardware. And so we've created just a very quick list here of some of the, the terminology that will come up throughout our uh, webinar today. One is the uh, finished width, which is uh, the finished width of your drapery, but also the width of your, um, your drapery hardware. We're gonna talk a little bit about the finished length of your drapery and how that impacts the actual finished length of your uh, drapery from the uh, bottom of the rod to the floor. We're going to talk a little bit about your stacking space, the center draw, whether that's uh, how you operate the drapery, um, center draw meaning if it's opening uh, left and right. We're going to talk a little bit about one-way one draw, uh, drawing the drapery panel entirely to the left or to the right, and uh, a leading edge, um, which is the spot where the curtains overlap in the center of either a two-way traverse rod or just a, de a decorative drapery rod with pole. But like I said, this is not a drapery 101 basics, but these are critical when you're making decisions about your hardware. So we just wanted to touch a little bit on it throughout the, um, the presentation. Uh, just a couple of um, photos actually on what uh, some of those uh, terms mean that come up often. Um, if you look on the left side of the screen, the center split ripple fold, uh, one of our most popular options that we're working with today. Um, you can see this flat uh, section here, if you can follow my mouse. This uh, flat section here is where the drapery will actually overlap um, to create no uh, gap in between the two drapery panels. Um, that's critical when you want to block out sunlight, uh, block out light if you have blackout drapery, and also create uh, privacy um, in your uh, space. Um, so that overlap is uh, important to know 
if you're specifying drapery with um, channels that have, you know, a master carrier or a butt, car butt master carrier. And we'll talk about that shortly. We also have um, this uh, style of drapery with a return. And that again, uh, allows you to block out light, hide your bracket systems underneath if you have a sheer panel or hide um, an unsightly window tr uh, trim or casing or any kind of uh, deficiency with the uh, drapery. And it's also nice when you are designing a drapery panel where you actually see the drape on this as you enter the room and you see the side of the window. And uh, what this does is it allows the um, lining to be concealed even uh, for the drapery panels. So we like to work with um, returns when uh, the drapery um, is part of like an entrance, entrance into a room. So we're gonna start by looking at uh, channel rods, uh, which is our best um, seller today for a variety of different drapery styles, whether it's a pinch pleat or a ripple fold. And uh, we're gonna actually walk you through all the different components uh, that we have here. And, and now Rohit's gonna talk a little bit about uh, his, um, his stuff here. Hello, Elman, welcome everyone. Uh, we just um, uh, talking about the channel rods right now, which is available in one and three eight diameter. It comes in all the popular finishes, but the best part of uh, um, having our channel rods, I mean, uh, the kind of finishes we offer and, and it has much more strength than the regular channel rods available in the market. And uh, just all the customers and the designers have the um, a, a choice of uh, picking any, any kind of finials, be it a Murano glass or the crystals or the plain simple end caps or anything. And uh, we have a variety of the brackets too, like a single bracket, shorter projection, um, longer projection, double bracket, or the ceiling brackets. Um, and uh, I mean, we have uh, like a ball bearing carriers too for the pinch feet uh, treatments. Um, and we have also introduced a new um, uh, collection called uh, like a, here it says like a corner elbow. It's like a modern version of, uh, of a French return, basically. Um, that it looks, I mean, it gives it a look like um, um, uh, um, like um, a French turn, but in a, in a ripple fold or the pinch plate manner. And uh, uh, just so you know, the technicalities of a, of a channel pole, the brackets attach here at the top. So you would see the small screw here um, to allow the bracket to actually fit into the groove. And then this is where your runners or your ball bearing carriers would be um, inserted. And that allows the, the drapery treatment to smooth, uh, smoothly pass along the length of the rod. And um, that is ideal for a ripple pull treatment, obviously, uh, and much more decorative than say a KS track, which we're going to, going to address uh, later on in the, in the presentation. Oh, Actually, sure. the back one? Sure. The, there was something special about Oops, sorry, Darren. these brackets at the top. Yes. So one of the things that we love as, as a workroom and our installers love is working with these double brackets or sorry, the, the, both the double and the single brackets that are wall mounted. Um, Rohit, do you want to talk a little bit about that uh, plate that slides into the bracket? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things what I have always heard and experienced from my um, customers throughout, um, like the exposure of the screws. And uh, what we did here, uh, when we developed um, a series of the brackets uh, for the regular treatment or for the um, channel rods, uh, we want to make sure like the screws are hidden. I mean, not visible because that kills the whole, that look kills the whole look actually um, when the designer is doing um uh, a, a very high end or very, what kind of job are they doing. So like the bracket we're showing, uh, the flat um, uh, bracket, what you see, uh, which says double bracket and the single ball bracket. So basically the, the, the plate, which, which has like a, a countersunk on it, that's a back plate, which goes onto the wall and it works as a back plate. And then, then, then the bracket slides on it and then just tied in with the Allen screw. So it holds very, very tightly, very sturdy, and um, and also, you never see the screws actually, which is all 
uh, hidden behind the behind the bracket, and that same applies onto the uh, the the other bracket, which is shown on the bottom, uh, like a round back plate. So you never uh, see the screw, and that's that's a very big thing actually, especially nowadays when the customer is doing a, a such a beautiful jobs, you know. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, important to consider when you're specifying expensive fabrics or even when you're using a moderately priced fabric, it's nice to have hardware that is clean and finished without any uh, visible screws. Now there are some in the collection that have uh, that just by means of necessity, but even those are very well uh, finished with the beautifully counter countersunk um, screw holes. So it's just a refinement that you can uh, come to expect from a high quality hardware that's um, vastly different from buying something from say Home Depot or Restoration Hardware. And we'll, we'll look at some of the differences in those uh, later on. Um, but our, I, I think that one of our things that we love about this collection or uh, when we look for a good quality channel rod is the gauge of the uh, metal. Um, these don't, these are solid. They feel good, they are heavy. They actually hold up to a lot of weight. And that's one of the things that you should be looking for when you're specifying a channel rod is uh, what type of uh, gauge are you are you uh, specifying? And it gives like a luxury feel actually. It doesn't look like a white, simple white tracks, you know. It, I mean, it comes in all different beautiful finishes, but uh, it gives like a luxury nest to the product. Absolutely. And, and a high functionality as well because of how well-made they are. Tara and Catherine both are commenting how much they love the bracket. Good. Thank you. Great. Um, okay, so the next, uh, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about um, the shear track that uh, is also available in uh, Rohit's collection, but um, maybe I should go back to this uh, slide here uh, to show just quickly, if you can take a look at this um, area here on the double bracket, there's a little um, section here that's cut out and that allows for the shear track to be mounted behind the decorative um, uh, drapery panels. So you'd have two poles in this uh, scenario. One would be your decorative um, channel pole, and then you would put your shear track in this spot over here. And of course you could also do two decorative poles front and back or two shear tracks front and back. So the bracket allows for that flexibility. So um, next uh, KS tracks, are uh, also quite popular. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about why uh, that is um, when you look at it in comparison to the more decorative um, uh, poles that, that we get through Deco and Deco. Your um, chaos tracks are very low profile. They kind of blend into the ceiling. So you don't necessarily notice them after a while. The drapery is really the star of this uh, particular window. So you can see how we've done these beautiful deep ripples on a 100% ripple fold panel. And uh, the designer chose to work with a KS track because it just blends right into the ceiling. And after a while, you tend not to even notice it. They do come primarily in white, but now we can get them in black, an antique bronze and a um, uh, aluminum, a brush nickel. But uh, again, it's a very um, basic look and um, does the purpose and it's not expensive, but if you're really looking for something that's a little bit more decorative, this wouldn't really be the track to work with, but it does um, offer a very high degree of functionality. And our uh, installers typically will uh, bring this with them or they stock them in their truck or they're easy to uh, get our hands on. But again, it's just when you really don't have any other options or you want the, the, the track to just disappear into the ceiling um, uh, visually. But the other thing that we can do with a KS track is that you can actually mount it inside of a channel in the ceiling. So during construction, if you have the option to cut a length of uh, drywall open, insert this track, you can actually have it uh, disappear entirely into the ceiling and your drapery uh, is basically like a quarter of an inch or half, a one eighth of an inch off of the ceiling. So that is one benefit to working with the KS track, but uh, that's something that has to be specified at the time of construction or renovation. And um, if you had uh, um, plans that you could work with um, from your builder or that you're designing yourself, we could always work with you on specifying the exact uh, correct lengths for you. 
because these also do come in in a very long 20 foot lengths. Um, you know, there's really not a lot of limitations with the KS track except for um, style. And then these are the runners like uh, for pinch pleat panels. You can run a ch um, the snaps for ripple fold off of these as well. Um, so again, it has that uh, um, flexibility and option. Uh, with uh, Deco and Deco, they have a much more decorative option available, their shear track. So again, this would act as a track for both um, shears. We've done them actually with decorative panels as well when the designer wants a much more modern finish. Um, what's different about this in the KS track is that it has a slightly higher profile. So it is a little bit more visible. Um, but with the colors that uh, Rohit offers, um, there's a lot more that you can do with this one in terms of style. Yeah, it comes in all four finishes, like uh, we mentioned earlier, satin brass, black, they both are super popular. And then we have a brushed nickel, polished aluminum, and all of our other brackets can be used here, uh, especially with the ceiling mount. Um, even though rods comes in the length of, uh, rods or tracks comes in the length of eight feet, but once we put the splicer, it, you can extend to as whatever length you need actually. And it, goes, it runs very smoothly. And a couple of questions, sorry. On the uh, two slides previous still, on the back to the rod examples, mm -hmm. we had one uh, question from Deborah. Does drapery turn the corner with the corner rods or is it just to see the continuity of the rod? No, the drapery doesn't. I mean, just like uh, onto the uh, angle side, um, there, yeah, other side. Yeah, so there's just like a one um, a runner there, which hooks up, like, uh, hooks up there. And just to um, uh, give her like a more darkness, but the drapery stops right where uh, the, the elbow starts actually, right here. Excellent, thank you. And then from Tara, back to the, the cutout in the double bracket. Mm -hmm. Would this be good for a hotel application? Absolutely, absolutely. They are yeah. very strong. Great. Yeah. Let's keep going. Hope that answered everyone's questions. Okay, we're going to get into um, rods and rings, which is a, a very stylish um, uh, option for drapery hardware. So, here we have uh, Rohit's rods and ring um, collection. Yeah, so I mean, all these rods comes in a different diameters. Um, like we offer um, from three quarter inch, uh, one inch, uh, one and three eight and two inch diameter and um, multiple finishes. I mean, the good part with our Deco and Deco hardware, I mean, majority of the products are made of solid brass, which is not the case with the other, um, other uh, sources. Um, or the vendors. Um, for example, um, like all the rings are made of solid brass, all the brackets are made of solid brass. Um, same applies to um, the finials. And uh, solid brass is such a like a, a more reputable um, uh, product. I mean, once you present it to, to your client, it uh, gives like much more value to it. Like the, and the, 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 the if, I mean, especially when you're doing the good jobs. Um, I mean, it, give, it always gives like much more uh, value to the presentation. Um, also, um, the same thing applies here, like rods comes in the length of six and eight feet, and they're like a one single length rod. They are not telescopic. For example, like Jacqueline mentioned, like they are not like a restriction hardware, which is uh, supposed to be known as a very high end product, but which is not the case with us. I mean, ours is like um, um, uh, one single length and uh, you can, you can use as, I mean, whatever the length of the windows or the treatment you're using, you can just splice them together. Just use the um, uh, center bracket or bypass bracket or the joiner brackets. We have many options on the brackets, um, different lengths, different projections, um, and many choices actually. So that all, you know, solves the purpose. I mean, um, we have a square rod too, and, um, and, um, uh, and we also have introduced a new uh, re rectangular rectangular rod, which uh, which is going to come uh, soon after this. Um, and right on onto the right side, you can see the bypass ring uh, and the bypass bracket. This is very important. Um, many times when uh, when you're doing a, like um, a large windows, let's say a 16 feet or 20 feet window, 
So you just need a couple of these bypass brackets right in the middle and some bypass rings. And, uh, and then you can just um, you know, use it as, as a center opening or left to right or right to left. So this solves the whole purpose, which many customers actually doesn't realize the importance of the bypass rings and brackets. Yeah, I wanted to mention um, that uh, when you're doing, if you didn't have the option or didn't like the look of a channel rod and wanted to showcase, you know, something a little bit more decorative with rods and rings, the bypass uh, bracket allows you to actually do a full window treatment that allows you to close in the center. But um, you use your bypass bracket in the middle uh, of the pole or, or wherever you need to reinforce the hardware. And then you would have your uh, regular brackets on the end. So the bypass does definitely work, but it can't be your single source of bracketing uh, because you need the extra reinforcement and the, um, the support. But uh, it is a great option. And uh, we find that the, this quality doesn't actually fall off the rod. We've seen uh, bypass rings and have had experience with bypass rings actually falling off. And um, that's not good for your clients. They're not gonna be happy with their drapery constantly falling off. Um, and what uh, matters here is that the weight of the actual ring and the weight of the drapery has, you know, sort of a, um, a, an impact on each other. The, 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 the ring actually weighs down on the rod and then allows it to um, stay in place. So we find that uh, having a heavy gauge uh, metal to work with is actually uh, much better than working with a cheap aluminum uh, ring. Okay. So. Uh, Sorry, Jacqueline, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Rohit. I'm just telling like uh, the rings comes with both options um, uh, with the liner and without the liner. So that's also very important, especially when they're, when somebody's using a, let's say an acrylic rod and, uh, and they want to have it like a functional, then it's always recommendable to use the rings with the, with the plastic liner, which, which is so smooth and, you know, um, uh, going to protect the, um, uh, rod from the scratches, you know. Yeah, that's actually uh, something to look for in all brands when you're specifying your uh, rings, that you uh, specify a ring with a plastic liner in it. Um, it doesn't look great when you're actually like sort of collecting them and, and putting them into place. But once the drape, once it's on the rod, you don't actually see the plastic liner. And uh, especially when you're specifying a black rod, um, acrylic, yes, but black especially because black does tend to scratch and show a little bit more um, obviously. So the plastic liner is something that we always specify um, no matter what the brand is that we're uh, working with. And that's something that designers will be, um, uh, you know, wise to select because they want to protect the, the long-term um, wear and tear on the, on the drapery hardware. And also the, the, the liner actually is like a clear liner. So it's, it's, it, it actually blends with the, with the metal. So you don't see that, mm -hmm. that too much, you know, even when the drapes are open. Jane says, very stylish and love the bypass ring too. Mm -hmm. And we have a question from Nina. Are your bypass brackets and regular brackets the same measurement? Yes. Yeah, so the projection is the same from the wall to the, the, the cradle as it would be with any of the other brackets. So they're, they're complementary. And that's, that's again, the same for most of the brands that we work with. Just got some um, terminology here for the different types of brackets that are available. Um, this would be your uh, cradle bracket, which uh, comes in all the different sizes. So you get the, uh, if you have a one and three eight uh, pole, two inch pole, you're gonna get the appropriate bracket with the right cradle size um, to fit. Um, to fit the actual pole. The um, double cradle is like your double channel rod where you can actually have your shear in the back and your, um, your, drapery, your decorative drapery on the face. Um, our most popular is the cradle bracket here. Um, and the reason why is that this is actually doubly reinforced um, in the wall. So you can actually screw in, uh, in four places. And that uh, allows for um, where you need, where you have a very heavy drapery treatment. And we always specify that the, um, that the designer, or we always recommend rather that the designer choose the bracket that's going to allow for the most amount of um, st uh, stability. Okay. Right. And Rohit, can you talk a little bit about your uh, inside mount brackets as well? Oh yes, these inside mounts, I mean, um, they, 
see, see these are kind of multi-purpose bracket. I mean, they can be, um, first of all, they are wall to wall and, um, and um, it can also be used in the showers. I mean, many of my um, uh, clients actually have used these um, brackets as a um, shower rod brackets too. Um, and uh, they, they are very easy to install, especially the one on the right side, which has uh, uh, two holes on it. So that's a back plate which goes into the wall and, uh, and then just simply um, push that um, cap onto it. It just works very phenomenally well. Um, the good part is that, I mean, um, they are brass, so they never rust, even if somebody's using in the shower as a shower curtain. So, which is not the case with uh, many other um, uh, places where um, you can buy these uh, um, inside mount brackets because they are like a plated steel and all the zinc. So it either breaks or it, it, or it get rust, which is not the case with these brackets. And also, I mean, it goes so finely inside the window frames too. Comes in all different sizes, as we mentioned, three quarter, one inch, one and three eight and two inches, all the finishes as well. And I think that's an important point to uh, to make in that it is um, water, like it is uh, rust proof. So if you um, are a kitchen and bath designer or part of NKBA, it's worth looking at um, actually using this type of hardware to um, to prevent any type of uh, a corrosion. And uh, I think that we forget about drapery hardware as being a kitchen and bath product, um, but it's definitely something that uh, is worth um, considering and the quality that uh, you should be looking for is, um, is, is important because that's gonna make sure that over time your, your product that you install into a bathroom holds up as, as uh, long and as well as a faucet or you know, a bathroom, uh, anything that's going into the bathroom. Oh, and I also wanted to mention this acrylic bracket on the bottom. We're going to talk a little bit about acrylic uh, hardware later on in the slides, but um, uh, definitely something that uh, Rohit's got some really interesting innovation around. So the other component uh, that you need to consider when you're uh, selecting your hardware is your finials and your end caps. Uh, not only are they uh, a matter of style, but they're also a way of preventing the drapery from falling off the end of the pole. And uh, we've um, seen in our, our work and our research uh, DIY solutions where people have actually not included the hardware or sorry, an end cap in their hardware. And uh, that's just a disaster waiting to happen. The drapery is going to fall off the end of the pole. It's going to constantly cause frustration. And um, uh, you know, it, it's just like, it's bad design to not include some sort of a, a finial or end cap. Um, and uh, I would encourage you to come and visit us at the showroom to see these in person because you really have to feel them to believe what you're buying and the quality that uh, you're getting with your, your end cap. And um, also too, like I've had uh, designers tell me that they've had end caps actually fall off uh, the pole and cause damage to furniture or small children or to even to, um, uh, you know, a floor, permanently damage a floor. So making sure that you're buying the best possible finial that, no, that the installers have ease in, in attaching is also very important. And one thing, I mean, which um, majority of the customers actually don't know, like uh, uh, our finials actually goes over the rod. So you don't need a, like a, an extra screw or something to like the wooden rods. Like, I mean, many companies, they supply the, the plastic insert in, even in, for the metal rods and where you just, um, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, connect the finials, but this is not the case here. So these goes over the rod and you, there's a, like a side, um, on the side there's a, like a Allen screw, just tied it up and they are super strong. Um, the finials, what you see in the picture, for example, the ones showing on the left picture, uh, they, um, the, the one in the black and silver, for example, that's a real Murano glass finial, all handmade in Italy. And um, the one, uh, the other one, which is kind of um, like a crystal, uh, diamond cut crystal, that's the one made in Austria. So, so and, the, and the other ones you see in the picture, I mean, they are made in the different part of the world. So we, we make sure like the products we bring and cater to our clients are very unique. I mean, we are not competing with the people like, um, uh, we don't wanna compete with people like Home Depot, Walmart or Restoration Hardware or, or anybody. We just wanna make sure like when our customer get, they get the best of the best. 
and uh, which is not easy to get anywhere else. And one of the biggest trends right now in uh, finishes is the satin brass um, or anything that's gold. That's uh, a huge trend right now. And I think that's actually going to continue uh, into 2021. We've seen, we've been watching the fashion trends uh, on all the runway shows over the last couple of weeks. And one of the things that's popped up over and over again is warm, comfortable, cozy. I know that um, right now, uh, a lot of the color of the year uh, launches are happening and we're seeing a lot of calming and restful teal tones, like something that's, you know, sort of ocean and like, I guess because of what's going on in the world right now, we need calmness. So that seems to be a big trend in colors, but in the metal trend uh, that we're seeing, it's uh, typically in the warmer metals. So that, that's going to continue into 2021. So um, when you're specifying a, a gold finish, when you put the satin brasses up against some of the other golds, there's a huge difference in terms of clarity, tone, intensity. Um, you, some look very, you know, sort of bright and, and shiny, but they don't seem to hold the, the gold color very uh, long. Whereas uh, when you are specifying gold hardware, we're suggesting that you look at these types of finishes here that have that, that beautiful satin brass uh, finish that's going to actually last for, you know, forever basically, because it's not, it's rust proof. And there's a one big reason of um, like why our satin brass is so unique and looks so rich um, because they are like a real solid brass metal. And, and uh, while the other companies just have like a plated steel, so you can never achieve that same um, feel or look what you what you what you will get on the real brass. So that's the case with our finials or our rods or our rings. They all are brass. So that's why you just get a one single tone and such a rich and warm tone. Like this is a, like a preferably designer's choice without any second thought. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just wanted to recap a couple of things that Rohit mentioned. Um, the actual hardware fits into the cuff of the of the uh, finial as opposed to having a plug that goes into the actual opening of the pole. That's important um, because uh, this means that the, the hardware, the pole and the finial are connecting and then getting screwed into place with a small tiny little uh, bit that um, basically gets screwed in with an Allen key. And one of the things that our installer does for us, um, it's a, a tip that he taught me on a couple of installs, is that he always takes the Allen key from every package of every hardware, or every finial pack, and puts it on the top of the window frame. And um, he does that to help us um, not lose the part. So when the, if anybody needs to clean the window or maybe paint the window and needs to take down the hardware, the Allen key is right on the window, window ledge. And we encourage um, all installers to do that because it, it certainly is a nice value add for the client. All right, so um, some specialty rods and rings and brackets that are available coming out of uh, Rohit's um, studio. Um, we, we fell in love with this uh, rectangular acrylic rod. It's absolutely spectacular and, and uh, just an, like, it really is a jewelry for the window. Ro, do you want to mention uh, a little bit about the difference between, you know, your acrylic and what uh, what's out there on the market? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, one thing I like to uh, bring, definitely bring in, in everybody's attention, um, like uh, the acrylic we use or, or we offer to our customer, this is the finest available acrylic in the world. I mean, it never turns yellow, which was the case when, when I introduced acrylic many years ago in the round rods. Um, all my customers, they were just kind of scared and complaining that uh, the acrylic they were using from different sources, it turns yellow, yellow and it has bubbles inside. So from day one, um, I just put like a, my strong attention that it, it should be the bestest available in the market and there, sh there should not be any bubbles at all. So, so the acrylic, when you feel it, I mean, you, feel, you actually feel like you're holding like a glass rod, like a clear glass rod. So so shiny, well polished, um, and the edges are so smooth and you don't um, uh, uh, like a feel um, uh, like the sharp edges and the rings slide so very well on it. Um, so th that's one thing, um, especially with, with our acrylic drapery hardware, that's the reason why it is so popular uh, throughout the North America, that it is the bestest quality acrylic available. 
and um, and the uh, and um, and the products we we offer like for example here the rectangular rod this is our newest edition um, getting very very popular it comes in three different finishes but uh, uh, we I want to make sure like um, uh, when the customer install the acrylics they have um, um, the, the the different components the the most important pieces are the brackets actually which uh, not many people realize. Uh, especially the first one, which uh, Jacqueline has put a cursor on it, um, like that's a that's a um, very wide brackets. We 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 basically call it like, as a like a joiner bracket, and uh, it's like a two inches wide. So it, I mean, you can you don't need a. I mean, you first of all you cannot uh, um, splice the acrylics because they are solid inside. So so we developed something new. Um, for example, this kind of bracket, which is like a two inches wide. So the rod goes inside an inch from each side and there are enough Allen screws um, at the back of these brackets. So it holds the rod. You don't need to glue the rod. You just need to uh, make sure like it, it's installed properly and it's, it's tightened properly from the back and it's super solid. So, and also same with the rings. Um, uh, we put the liners here. Um, I mean, you don't see it from the, once it's installed, you don't see it from the front. But the purpose is like not to make sure like it doesn't uh, scratch the, uh, the rod, which is the beauty here actually. Yeah, and one of the things that when you're specifying your acrylic, uh, regardless of where you're um, actually getting your acrylic rods from, it could be from another supplier or from Deco and Deco, but what you wanna make sure is that you're able to actually join them and then have them stable in that joint. And we've, uh, we did a job for a designer out in Ottawa and uh, she installed this over a fairly long uh, window, a wide window, and we used uh, a number of um, the loop brackets to help her um, join the extra pieces of rod that needed to, um, the different intersections that needed, that she needed throughout the window. And um, that uh, has held up beautifully over the last uh, year and a half. We've had no complaints and no feedback from her that there's been any sagging or any issues uh, with regards to the weight of the uh, drapery. And um, that's extremely important to consider when you're specifying acrylic, that you have a way to actually connect the rods. That doesn't require you to actually cut the rod on site because that's one hole that we don't recommend an installer cut, although they probably could if they needed to. Um, but uh, you know, it is just a, a way in ensuring that you always keep the clarity and the finish um, intact uh, for your customer over the long period of time. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the challenging windows that um, we help designers uh, dress. Sorry, and, Jacqueline. Yeah. Um, we had a question a bit ago regarding, uh, we're, Catherine was wondering if they could also be used for outdoor treatments um, previous. Are you, is Catherine, uh, Catherine, are you asking about all of the hardware or just the acrylic? So uh, the, the actual brackets themselves could be used outdoor because they're like, when you're using them in a bathroom, for example, you have a lot of moisture and changes in humidity and there's no issues with corrosion over uh, the life of this uh, hardware. And uh, we have a number of different brands that uh, could actually be used um, outdoor and are actually branded for outdoor use. But, um, you know, we always make sure that we look at whether or not they are going to hold up to extreme weather conditions, whether it's extreme humidity and heat or uh, high moisture, um, like, you know, in, in rainy, wet conditions. So, um, Rohit, your hardware, because they hold up in bathrooms, would be equally high performance in an outdoor setting. Oh yeah, um, um, I tell you, I give you an example. Um, some of my customers in Florida, for example, they have used my product outdoor um, and many times um, and, uh, and never get rust um, because it's a brass. The brass never get rust, no matter what. And, and the kind of lacquer we use on it in order to protect the finish, uh, it's very strong. So the finish stays there for many, many, many years actually. Um, I mean, you definitely cannot put uh, un, uh, direct under direct sunlight or, uh, uh, or direct water, but I mean, it, as long as you're using outside and there's a bit of a shade, it's absolutely fine. Without any problem, you can use it, yes. And that's, uh, I know JF has a really great outdoor line as well that would be worth looking at if you're doing 
you know, a cabana or some sort of a um, porch or patio uh, situation. So uh, there's definitely a lot of options available for outdoor use, but it is important to ask the right questions to make sure that it will hold up to extreme weather conditions so that you're not having to take down your drapery treatment over the course of um, the winter. And also, you know, you could perhaps extend the life of your porch use by doing a really good drapery treatment um, with uh, some of the outdoor fabrics that we have available for that. So some really great uh, combinations. So good question, Catherine, thank you. Okay, so looking at some challenging windows that we've been uh, working on with some designers. So um, I, I've got a couple of things here that I wanted to talk about. One is the, the different types of um, windows that we often uh, help our designers um, dress. This uh, window here at the top of this Bayview uh, collection um, uh, info sheet here is uh, a deep uh, bay window with 90 degree angles. So this is where you're um, having to do either a custom bent rod or elbow brackets. And that will allow you to get into a three-sided bay window um, with um, you know, any, any length of drapery treatment. Um, we're working with a designer right now that um, has specified a, a CRS track from Jackson. And um, she wanted it to be done in a continuous uh, piece of metal. So basically we're taking the CRS track and actually having it custom bent to fit into her uh, window. And um, the installer provided us with the angle, the length of the, uh, the two lengths coming out uh, into the room, the length of the wall behind, uh, sorry, the window at the longest point, and then also the two uh, corners. So by providing us with that information, we were able to actually create a template and then a custom bent rod for her. And uh, that's a nice clean and seamless look. Um, if you didn't want to have any uh, elbows or joints or, you know, anything that's going to obstruct the finish of the metal. Um, the uh, three-sided bay windows, this is probably a lot more common in uh, North American house at homes, uh, where you're going to have to actually have two windows meet on a 45 degree. Um, we've uh, often used um, any type of bracketing that uh, you use an elbow joint. And here, uh, this is actually... Um, the one from Bayview, which allows you to connect two poles. So this is this uh, port, part here is the color of the actual hardware. And then these are where you insert into the hardware to uh, create the joint. And then these, um, these like pivots, so they have like this ability to move uh, into a few different directions to allow you to create the angles. So you don't have to go the route of a custom bent rod. And um, we encourage uh, extra brackets when you're working with a, a bay window or any type of bay window for that matter, because you want to reinforce it along the way as you're, you're turning these um, uh, corners. Um, Three-sided bay windows that are deep uh, are also um, common, uh, not too, too, too common, but they're, uh, they're out there. And so we help our designers with using multiple uh, brackets that, um, and multiple elbows that are, are uh, shown here. And of course, uh, you have by bypass brackets if you ever needed your drapery to round the corners on these windows. So you can actually have your center split here. And then using a, a, um, a bypass bracket, you can actually turn the drapery around the corner to create an opening. And then the, the bypass uh, rings, of course. Um, this is a window here that we did uh, a curved um, drapery treatment for a designer. And uh, we created uh, the curve of her uh, window using a template. And these brackets here uh, from Jackson are extendable brackets. And what the um, ex uh, extendable brackets allow us to do is actually, you're, you're never gonna have straight walls or straight floors or straight ceilings. And what this allows us to do is actually correct the deficiencies in the curve as uh, using the bracket. So you don't actually have to do custom you know, sorry, super custom bends and curves in the bracketing, you can actually just, oh, sorry, in the pole, you can actually just use the bracket to extend and push and pull in as you need to. And um, that's every curve window requires you to do that. This uh, window here, um, this is an actual rounded uh, window. So we have the rod in production right now. Um, and the rod will sit in between the window and the um, crown molding. 
and it will curve um, exactly as our template is shown here on the floor. So what we had our installer do was actually go out and um, template this with pieces of paper and on the pieces of paper, he's actually marked every increment where a bracket is going to sit. And that bracket then uh, will be an extend an uh, adjustable bracket so that when he gets on site to do the install, he can actually open and close um, the bracket or extend the bracket as needed um, uh, so that the rod is staying uh, straight and stable along the span of the hardware. So this, this actually is a 337 inch round uh, hole. Um, it's, we couldn't do it in one piece because of how big it is. So we are actually using splicers on this one. And um, that's going to line, the splices will line up with the brackets so that uh, the designer ends up having a nice clean, um, a clean finish to her drapery hardware. And this could be done in a channel pole and also in uh, um, chaos tracks and solid poles with uh, uh, Jackson. And um, one of the things that uh, we think you, you need to start, oh, sorry about that, um, start looking about uh, looking at is when do you actually start the specifying um, of your drapery hardware? So where do you begin? We often are quoting our designers on drapery um, on, you know, just a look and a concept, but we actually ask them to consider um, the hardware because it has a huge impact on the actual manufacturing of, of the drapery. And uh, if we had um, all the information available as to what uh, the designer wants this to look like, we can, act we can actually then start to make some really good recommendations on things like your pleat style, your length, your fullness, your drapery, um, uh, you, sort of your, your overall look and the functionality of the drapery. So we, we stress the importance of actually starting right at the very beginning of your design process. Um, we also ask that you have that information available for when you have your installer ready for a check measure. Um, that's very uh, critical for the installer to know what it is that they're actually going to be installing at the time that the drapery is ready for, uh, ready for uh, the client. Um, not only that, but it also helps them to measure properly if they know exactly what type of bracket you plan to use. Um, they can measure the space above the window, next to the window, look for studs, look for any, any obstructions or anomalies in that window if they know exactly the type of bracket that you're going to be using. So we do um, stress that it's important that you have that information available at the time that you're actually booking a check measure. And we'll talk a little bit about what the check measure uh, information should uh, entail. We also um, uh, would love for you, for you to have this uh, hardware um, options available or, or uh, firmed up at the time of your order so that we can actually, when we, when we do a drapery order for somebody, we actually collect the hardware for them, count every component, match it against the, the work order, against the purchase order, make sure that there isn't a single screw missing from the order. And if anything is missing in advance, we can then go back and, and um, arrange for delivery of it from the manufacturer because most of these manufacturers have them in, uh, or suppliers have them in warehouses. So it's not a question of just popping in and picking it up. It has to be pulled and checked against an order. So we like to do that well in advance as a workroom and make sure that everything's available and checked and ready to go at the time that your drapery install is scheduled. You'll save yourself a lot of headache by having it um, selected in advance. When, uh, uh, when we're manufacturing drapery, uh, we absolutely need to know the hardware. And if we don't have the hardware available, we're making a lot of assumptions and a lot of assumptions like leads to a lot of costly mistakes on the job site. So we've, um, we've actually worked with a few installers and have arrived at one particular installer that we really like working with, who's extremely thorough in his information. And I can't stress enough how important it is to have as much detail as possible as you can, as you can uh, you know, or as, as the installer can provide so that we have information available when we actually start making the drapery. Um, if we don't have a confirmed check measure or information from the designer, we can't start production on anything until that is absolutely signed off on because we, you know, fabric is expensive, your time is expensive, we don't want you making costly mistakes, and we certainly don't want to be making mistakes with your um, clients' uh, requirements. This is a, a, an example of a, uh, the, the type of information that we're looking for. 
uh, when you're actually um, in the midst of a check measure. We need to know all the uh, information surrounding the window uh, for drapery, and that would be the, the stack area. This is the area where you'd be stacking away from the window. So if you had a, a drapery treatment that is going into the center of the window, you wanna know how much stack you have available to clear the window if you wanted to open the drapery completely. We need to know the height from the either the ceiling or the crown, which is uh, this mark here. So letter H is indicating ceiling to floor. We also need to know the uh, measurement E, which is from the ceiling or crown molding to the top of the window frame. And uh, that information is important to know uh, so that we know exactly where you actually want to install your drapery. So like we showed you in this picture here, the designer is going to have her drapery treatment installed right above, like in the middle of your crown molding to your window frame. That's the most aesthetically pleasing um, uh, solution to hanging drapery. Unless you have to go all the way up to the ceiling, um, it's always best to actually land just above your window frame at about halfway between the crown or the ceiling. So that information is, is extremely critical when you're arranging a check measure. And uh, we also recommend that the designer be on site for the check measure because the homeowners really don't know the best um, uh, solutions for measuring. And um, it's important that uh, the designer be there to have control over the situation so that the drapery treatment actually looks the way that you intend it to look once it's finished and installed in the client's home. The other information that um, we have noted on this sheet is important for you to have should you decide that you're going to uh, add layers of treatment to the window, whether that's a, a roller shade or a blind or a Roman, Roman shade, for example. All of this uh, inside mount uh, and inside measurements um, are important to have. And while the check measure is being done, it's worth it for the installer to actually make note of all of that so that you have options on how you end up adding layers uh, to that particular window treatment. So one of the things that um, we ask our installers to look for, or if they know the um, actual hardware choice that we're doing, we're working with, whether it's a track with runners or a rod with ring, is that they should be measuring uh, the location of the rod and then the measurement from the bottom of the rod, but it's actually not the bottom of the rod, it's the hook drop down to the floor. So it's the information that, um, basically when you have a runner or a ripple fold snap, it's that, that uh, measurement down that we need when we're uh, doing our finished length on the drapery. So if your installer knows that information in advance, we can actually do your um, correct uh, length on your drapery without any confusion or without any mistakes that is then gonna require you to have an adjustment made on your um, on your, your uh, drapery treatment. And that costs money. That costs you time. It costs the installer time to go back. So not only is it your time, the workroom's time, and also the installer's time, it's costing uh, your client and also probably frustrating them because they're expecting a finished uh, drapery treatment on the first uh, install. Uh, when you're using uh, rings, there's different types of eyelets to um, look at. Uh, we always suggest that you look at a ring that has an integrated eyelet, so it's actually part of the fabrication of the ring, as opposed to it having, you know, the little um, eyelets that screw into like a wood pole or even some of the metal poles have added in eyelets, or some are actually connected like by way of like a loop that actually is connected to the ring, and that's not necessarily the best quality available. We suggest that you find that one that's actually permanently attached to the hardware so that, or to the ring so that it can actually glide without any, um, any loosening of the, the eyelet. And then uh, when you have that selected, we need that measurement for uh, doing the finished length on a drapery pole with rings. So oftentimes people assume that it's the bottom of the actual uh, pole that you need your measurement for, but it's actually this measurement here that we require. And then we do the drop from there. And that's what gives us our finished length on uh, the drapery treatment. So these are things to talk to your installer about and make sure that they have all the information in advance and then they can do uh, the deductions according to uh, your selection and then present that to the workroom uh, for production. Um, oftentimes the workroom is doing the uh, deductions and that, you know, is um, causes confusion or it causes a little bit of a miscommunication when it's between uh, an installer and then a seamstress working on the machines. 
um, there's a lot of like sort of broken telephone along the way. And that's why we recommend that this be sorted at the time of the check measure and firmed up during your design process. On ripple folds, um, we uh, basically need to know if there's going to be a butt master. So do you want your ripple folds to mat, like to join up uh, here in the center like this? So it has a continuous um, uh, flow of your ripple or do you want an overlap where you can then uh, have some light control or uh, create some privacy? So those are two important things that we need to know when you're actually specifying your ripple fold treatment or even your, um, your drapery that's going to run on a channel rod. Do you need it to actually overlap? Um, because that's something that we would need to specify not only in the hardware um, work order, but also as we're manufacturing the drapery. So we've done a quick uh, case study here um, to show you uh, all the different things to consider and also to put into your drapery order, uh, your drapery hardware order. So in this case, we're working on a window with a designer that's 138 inches wide by 106 inches in height. The rod measurement that we're recommending is 138 inches. There is room on either side of the window for us to allow it to go beyond the window frame. And the reason why we specify an extra eight inches um, in the measurement is that you want to have four inches on either side of the window for your hardware, your brackets, your finial, your, your last ring on the pole. And uh, what that also does is it actually hides the, um, the side of the, dra uh, of the window frame and it doesn't end up peeking out from behind the side of the drapery. If you do that, if you don't do that, it looks like you've gone short on the drapery uh, rod and ends up, you end up having to fight with the window frame to constantly be adjusting the drapery to hide the window. And then, you know, it sort of looks like there was no point in really putting decorative side panels or functional drapery up against that window because it looks like it doesn't actually fit. So it's important that you leave at least a minimum of four inches on each side of the window. And that will accommodate a bracket going into a stud and also allow us to hide all of those things that we don't wanna see. So in this uh, case here, we, we have our uh, center split shears, uh, a width and a half of uh, drapery uh, panels on each side of the window at two times fullness. Two times fullness is one of the more popular fullnesses that we're doing these days. I think the days of doing um, really uh, sort of tr triple uh, fullness and drapery panels is gone. We're doing uh, two and a half times at most. Even on shears, we're doing 100% uh, uh, fullness on ripple fold, which is basically a very clean and modern approach to drapery. Uh, perhaps we'll go back to three times fullness um, when we do more traditional homes, but we haven't really seen that in our workroom in quite some time. So what we've done here is we've um, calculated that for a double, tre a double treatment, we need two rods, um, and that would sit on your double bracket as we saw before. So you're gonna need uh, either a shear, a shear rod and uh, for the back and a uh, um, regular pole for the decorative side panels. Um, so you need four of those because we're gonna be splicing the two rods together. So we have 85 inches in the length and we need two poles to put together with a splice. So you'll have a little bit of um, off cut on either side of the rods that uh, you can just basically you know, discard. So uh, we specified that you need four, four actual poles for that length of window. Brackets you're gonna need, uh, in my estimation, you need 10. With Rohit's product, you probably only need um, six brackets because you can get away with doing probably five in total per pole, or sorry, uh, four or three per pole because the, the, bra the rods themselves are so heavy duty that you don't necessarily need to shore up uh, the window, but we feel more confident when you have additional brackets. Um, rings, you don't have rings in this case because we're actually doing a channel pole. Uh, finials and end caps, we've selected the finials. This is a best seller finial right now for almost every brand that we work with. It's a very simple contemporary approach uh, to um, capping off the drapery rod. And uh, that's been a best seller for pretty much every designer over the last, like I would say two years running. Um, runners and carriers, my estimation is that you need uh, 62 runners. It would be, if it was a ring and rod uh, selection, you would actually need 62 rings uh, for these uh, two drapery treatments. 
if you were doing ring and rod on both uh, the shear and the decorative panel. And I'll do a quick calculation with you in another slide to show you how I came to that number. You need a uh, splicer joiners. So you need two splices to splice the front pole and then the back pole. And then you don't need elbows because this is just going into a straight window. So the purpose of this exercise is really to show you all the different components that you need to think about when you're ordering your hardware. No matter what the supplier is that you're working with, it's important that you always have the SKU, the color specified, the number of rods that you need, the number of rings, the number of runners, as much information as you can get out of your price list as possible. Or even better, work with your drapery workroom to do the uh, calculations and the um, specifying of the drapery hardware. We work with this every day. We know uh, all the different nuances and little things that you need, like end stops, for example, how to stop a, a, a ring or a runner from moving across the pole. We work with this every day. So it's always best to actually have your drapery workroom if they offer that service to go through the specifying and the listing of every single component of your hardware as, as you possibly can. Your uh, quick calculations um, on a, full, a two times fullness of drapery. Um, I wanted to run this quickly because I, although this is a drapery hardware, sorry, a drapery 101 thing, it still relates to the hardware um, because it impacts the number of rings that you use. So on a 54 inch wide fabric, it'll typically pleat down to 24 inches. In a single width panel, you're gonna need eight hooks, which is what we see here. Okay, even though there's a nice wide decorative trim added, you still need eight hooks. Eight hooks because you're gonna hook on the last um, flat part of your drapery on either end uh, with a ring. A width and a half um, gives you 11 hooks and a double width would be anywhere from 14 to 16 hooks. And that's assuming that your pleat spacing is four inches apart um, across the span of the width of drapery. So that's what gives us our 54 inches pleated down to 24 inches. And this is an example of uh, uh, a single width pull, uh, single width of uh, drapery. So you, I know ex automatically by looking at this that it's a single width because of the number of pleats and the number of rings. Uh, this one here is a width and a half, again, because of the number of uh, pleats and the number of rings that are specified, and the same here. Okay. This one actually is a single width, but it's been given an extra ring because of the weight of this uh, trim detail. And uh, again here, single width with number of rings calculated. So that's a pretty standard when you're working on um, fullness of two times full. And that seems to be, like I said, the, the, the common fullness that most people are looking for these days. Here, Meredith has used uh, width and a half. Uh, this one here is a very full ripple fold drapery at 120%. And over here we have um, a single width uh, drapery, but I wanted to show this one um, because it's actually rounding a corner. So the, the uh, rings actually sit on either side of, of the elbow brackets. And then uh, here's a really great example of why quality matters in a big, a big box versus um, doing a high-end uh, high drapery uh, hardware from the likes of uh, Deco & Deco. You see no sagging in a long span of um, drapery uh, here. And, um, and in this case here, which is a telescopic rod, you're actually seeing um, a sagging in the middle and that's gonna happen guaranteed. It's um, a very common issue that we encounter when people are buying uh, hardware from big box stores. And um, we often have to replace hardware from uh, restoration hardware or Home Depot, or we even get you know people asking about replacing their Walmart hardware, because this is absolutely inevitable. It's going to happen when you have a telescopic rod. And then in this uh, example here, we have a, an acrylic rod that you can see clearly sagging and it's sagging right towards the end of the drapery. So I can't even imagine how bad the quality is on that. So just to recap, and I know we're, uh, we're at one o'clock now, so I just wanted to recap quickly some of the things to think about when you're specifying your uh, drapery hardware. Quality matters because uh, your hardware is not going to sag when you have heavy duty fabrics or heavily lined drapery, especially important when you're doing interlining. Continuous rods versus telescopic rods. Um, the, again, in that photo I showed the telescopic rod is collapsing in the middle. 
uh, rings uh, won't slide smoothly across a telescopic rod. You're gonna always have an issue with it getting caught on the sections that actually connect the two rod sections together. Uh, your color and your finish is gonna last longer, whether you're in a wet, uh, wet space, like a bathroom or uh, outdoor. And it's also uh, even indoors, uh, something to consider is that you're not gonna have colors that will fade or chip away off the surface of the pole. A low quality acrylic or lucite will yellow over time or it will have bubbles and lack clarity. So always look for quality hardware um, so that it has some longevity and life to it. And that it also looks like uh, great designer quality. So we just wanted to play a quick video for you showing um, what's happening in Rohit's uh, foundry. So you can tell us a little bit about your uh, family's business. Yeah, well, like Deco and Deco is just like a dedicated hardware company. All we do is hardware. I mean, uh, be it a decorative drapery hardware or other kind of decorative hardware. Um, so our main focus just to uh, make sure like whatever hardware we are bringing on board or introducing to, to our customers, I mean, they are one of its kind. So um, like, for example, our products are uh, uniquely made in uh, different parts of the world. For example, the, the Murano glass is exclusively made in Italy. Crystals are uh, exclusively made in different parts of Europe, some from um, Czech Republic, some from Germany, some from Austria. And the same thing applies to uh, solid brass products. They are all made in India. Um, one more unique thing I like to introduce um, and uh, bring to your attention, like um, there are actually the real people uh, behind uh, these products. I mean, they're, they're, they are not machine, I mean, not, not all, but majority of them are not machine made. So they are like a actual people who are working hard in order to develop these kind of products. For example, Murano's or the cast brass items or the crystals. Um, so, and the other thing, we also have the capability of doing so many uh, custom things, um, custom finishes and custom styles. Um, so being a manufacturer, I understand there are so many uh, challenges um, what our customer uh, can have, but we have a solution uh, to, to bypass those kind of challenges. Thanks, Rohit. And uh, you can also follow Rohit on Instagram. He's got some really beautiful uh, postings of his uh, work. So, um, Hi, Jack. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Uh, Jeanne was wondering um, if afterwards they can, if there's any way to obtain a copy of the presentation. Absolutely. We'll be happy to email out uh, a copy of the presentation to all of our, our participants today. Perfect. So uh, just to recap, uh, or sorry, to finish off, we wanted to talk a little bit about our resource center. If you haven't visit us, visited us at TIDC, uh, we'd love to see you uh, come in. Uh, we have really solid social distancing and COVID safe uh, processes in place. So we welcome you to drop in any time during uh, the week to see us at um, our showroom at uh, Ultralux Linens. And um, if you don't know uh, yet, we've actually, uh, we launched a, a workroom in uh, 2017 and uh, quickly grew out of uh, the space and uh, expanded into what used to be our Durham uh, space in our showroom. Um, we now have three uh, drapery uh, um, seamstresses, uh, drapery and bedding seamstresses on our staff and uh, working full time with us. And um, we felt the need to expand our team because right now uh, everybody is busy. Designers are, are looking for drapery work um, in uh, volumes that we've not seen before. And so we've uh, expanded the team to help meet uh, very demanding timelines. Um, we're uh, bringing out seven new bedding collections. So watch out for that. Uh, but we also do very custom work as well. So whether it's a custom drapery treatment, pillows, bedding, anything that's soft goods related, including upholstery and reupholstery, all of that's available under uh, one roof. And of course, we have um, a very extensive uh, line of hardware and an ever expanding line of um, fabric and wall coverings uh, that you've got to come out and take a look at because it's just uh, really quite an endless um, assortment. And um, you can also uh, wa walk into our workroom and meet our, our team. Uh, we have a really great uh, team of um, seamstresses working with us. I can um, introduce you to them and they can actually answer any questions that you may have. And uh, you're welcome to come by anytime. 
Awesome. Thanks so much, Jacqueline. To everybody here with us, um, our next TIDC talk will be November 17th at noon. Um, it'll be all things rugs with Deco Trend. That just about wraps things up with us. Thank you very much to Jacqueline and Rohit. That was awesome. Um, chat was blowing up near the end, so we will try to get presentations to everyone who's requested or who'd like them. Um, if we didn't get to your questions, please send us a note um, and we'd be happy to answer them via email. And Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much.